Oh, hey there. Didn't see you there. It's me. I finally uploaded. Hello, what's going on, my gravy babies? And welcome back to the Hearts of Iron 4 channel, where we do Hearts of Iron 4, Hearts of Iron 4, Hearts of Iron 4, and sometimes other video games. And today we are continuing our special little series where we play every single starting nation in Hearts of Iron 4. It's called Hoi 4 A to Z, because we're going from the letter A to the letter Z. Kind of simple, really. And today we'll in the last letter of C, which has uh, been a great one. We've had a few good nations in the letter C, and we've got a few terrible nations in the letter D coming up. Can't wait! And yes, today we are playing the Czechs, aka Check Out Today's Sponsor. Thank you to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. With thousands of classes to pick from, you can go ahead and learn some new skills that you may have always wanted to pick up on, but never really had a chance or a place to do it. I checked out fellow YouTuber MKBHD's class on YouTube success, I'm sure many of you know him, to try and fix up a few of my editing skills myself and uh, my video presentation, especially for my super secret second channel. And I'm sure if you are getting into the world of YouTube or thinking about making your own videos, you could go ahead and use this class yourself to get yourself ahead of everyone else. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. It doesn't matter what level you're at, if it's a new skills, something you're actually expertised in, there will be a class for your level. So go ahead and sign up with Skillshare today because you never know what new skill or hobby you might find, or even if you want to just go ahead and develop an old skill that you haven't really touched in a while. And if you do go ahead and start up with Skillshare today, they're offering the first 1,000 of my subscribers who click the link down below one month for free. So go ahead, explore your creativity today and get started with Skillshare. Click that link down below. You'll thank me later. Thank you very much, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. So here we are in Czechoslovakia. If you know your history, it didn't go too well for Czech or Slovakia. But we do have our boy Edward. Um, if you don't know how to say his last name, it's pronounced Venus. Nah, I actually pronounce that, but it is pretty funny to say that, right? Well, the chicks are in an interesting position where us trying to survive is hampered by the fact we have a neighbor who wants us to die. I can't remember which, was it Death or Dishonor? The, the DLC that gave out the focuses for these guys in the uh, Balkans? I, ca I can't actually remember because there's been quite a few at this point and it's been many years, but uh, I know specifically these focus trees aren't the best now. Uh, I mean, if you look at the focus tree for these guys, and then you look at the focus trees for a nation that came out more recently that got a focus tree, they look looking too fresh. Needless to say, though, we're gonna have to work with what we got. And what we are going to do is not appease the damn Germans. You get no peas from me, mister. You've had too many. About the Czech focus tree that I've seen, though, is that you could go down one of these down here and get your entente of your own, actually get some land and doing some conquering and also go down a political side of the tree. So I think from what I've looked at so far, what I'm going to do is actually make our own Anton and grab everyone down here as quickly as we can. So we are going to be going communist. For the simple fact, if things go tits up too bad, we'll just join Stalin. Don't be afraid, Hungary. It is simply a arrow of friendship. Yo, we've convinced the Romanians to die with us. Sorry, survive with us. Different uh, camp propaganda campaign, that's for later. Friendly, friendly arrow invasion. I was kind of hoping I'd get lucky and flip the communist early, but we are nowhere close, so we are just going to take Hungary. Usually I'd puppet it so we don't have a uh, bigger line with the Germans, but yeah, it's how it's going to be. Also provide us with a juicy amount of army experience so we can try and teach you guys how not to die. But since democracies can only do supervised states, which uh, doesn't sound too much like democracies to me, <coughs> America, that means that we only will be able to take land or supervised states um, will eventually go free, which, um, that ain't fun. Anyway, next. And the best thing about actually taking these lands is that we uh, get their equipment, which we will need to, um, fend off the big bad guy. The uh, only annoying thing here is that I do now need to garrison this land, which yeah, ain't fun. I guess technically I could just release them. I didn't think of it like that. Hmm. Should I do it? 
I'm probably going to do it. Yeah, there we go. That way we get around the supervised state thing and we get ourselves a nice little puppet that the Germans can't walk through as we won't call them into the war. Anyway, next up is to crow for Romania to decide to join the war, but you know, we're going. Finally, congrats, Romania. Pat's on back. Oh, we just got two of those communist events in a row now, so we are up to 46. If we can do this very quickly, we might just be able to also invade Greece or Yugoslavia, who did not join but uh, prefer not to invade Yugoslavia because we are running out of time. Oh, first they ate the Austrians and now they're gonna eat me. <laughs> Boom, we've done it. Looks like we're gonna be way too late to invade Greece considering the world tension and the day, but uh, I'll throw it in there anyway just in case the Germans feel like being stupid and the allies don't want to guarantee, which isn't very likely. All right, we love Fortnite. Oh, here they come. The bad boys themselves. Uh, sorry, Turkey. I don't think this is a time for me to build a railroad in you. Sorry, I'm not home. Uh, leave a message in hell. We build some little forts ahead of time. We do have level seven forts all along here, which is very important. Until the Polish front opens up, we really just kind of want to hanker down and watch the Germans hopefully not invade us. Uh, it's also important to get yourself some AA in your units for the simple fact they shoot down planes and for some godforsaken reason in this game have piercing. They beat tanks, especially the AI tanks. So the original army I have, I have with these guys right here with the armor as well. Armored recon gives you a little bit of tiny smidge of armor and we get a support artillery obviously to blow things up. But our normal infantry, which is just for holding, is this. Ah, Stalin. Give me some guns, please. Ask and you shall receive. Uh, problem is, even with some actual static AA, which was the first thing I built, it's not going to keep those forts up forever. So um, just uh, try and build them back up. As long as the province you are rebuilding doesn't get attacked, you can constantly rebuild them. But, um, well, eventually these will get low enough that the AI will think they can beat them. Also, yeah, don't mind me. Zero percent stability. Just vibing. Please, please get that higher. Be good, though, because they are at war with the Allies immediately. I don't know why. They just killed Luxembourg. Just Luxembourg. And Luxembourg joined the Allies. <laughs> I, whatever. As usual, my newest trick is just getting equipment off the Soviet Union by actually putting myself in a deficit. It's on you, Stalin. I'm lying to you. I'm fudging the books. I'm a corrupt bastard. I'll just endlessly attack this one province down here because it's only got a level one fort on it, but I thought since across the river, uh, it hold pretty well. And it is. Ah, yes. The coolest of unit icons. The, the bee. <laughs> or the wasp. The Hornet. Some sort of flying insect. What I do is anytime I feel like there might be a weakness somewhere, I'll just keep an extra couple units deployed behind it that uh, I don't put on a front line or anything just to uh, shore up the defense if that you, that little promise might pop off, which um, I don't think they're going to get across this river. I uh, also love the, the Hungarians looking very prepared right there. I could call you in at any minute, Hungary. And you're doing push-ups on the front line. So because they are now split between the Allies and me, the German defense is looking very weak. I may try and push up to here so we get a better border with them. That's right, you're not welcome. There you go, it's looking pretty good. It does cost us a lot to do these pushes, but it gives us a way more favorable defense if they do invade Poland. Uh, still really trying to break this province down here. It ain't going too well for them. Hungry, you're not joining the war. What are you doing? No. Look, uh, you, this is all you have against the Germans. Now that's pretty epic. Pretty epic. Now I hope we can hold this encirclement as long as possible. If we can get everyone in here, we I think we've already won the war. Why thank you, British Raj, for your single convoy. I don't even own a port. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. And the Soviets still be paying for the whole damn thing. And that's 301 tanks, which is very good for us. That means we can build more of our fly divisions. Uh, I'll, I'll just like actual life, real life though. Uh, the phony war is definitely going on. The Allies have not done anything. And this is a very weak Germany right now, guys. Come on. Oh, the Italians finally joined the war. So we might actually see some forced action from the Allies here. Or they'll lose. 
It could be either. So right now I'm trying to make a push out into here, try and clear this part up. But uh, the Germans and the Axis just in general are just making more and more enemies. They just declared war on Greece. So uh, yeah, more friends for me, suckers. There we go. That was a very nice encirclement. But the problem is now the Polish just got called into the war. Not because of the Germans, because the Soviets declared war on them. That's just great. There you go. The Allies have finally made a push. Now the Poland is dead uh just, um it's kind of like real life really um <laughs> i hope the germans move more troops off my front line now that the allies are coming but it doesn't look like they are never mind the germans have just moved their entire line and now is the time to strike well that push was going pretty well but we've had to pull back because whilst we were making good progress the soviets decided that molotov rim drop should be accepted and uh, the best part is they got like half their army encircled down here because of the way it works so <laughs> i had to move troops over to quickly secure this border and now we're kind of well we can't push with half our troops over here i hope you're very happy with yourself stalin what is this the news is our army made just for defending is defending pretty well so we shouldn't have any trouble here until i get our new fresh selection of troops to shore up this side as well as this side uh apparently the german reich is just fine against us bit bit too late for that one mister oh looks like somebody woke up wakey wakey allies do your damn job how about these uh these troops trapped here is that they won't even let me give the military access because apparently they've got strategic reasons to be hostile towards me do you want your army back or not? They'll, they'll accept an attache though. Look, <laughs> you're, you're starving in there too. <laughs> oh, ain't my problem, right? My problem is kicking the Germans back to Berlin. Oh, we've got those meddlesome Germans on the rope now, and I think it will be the Czech troops that are the first into Berlin. There you go. We've taken Berlin. We've pushing them out of Poland, and I've got myself the new Soviet zoo, where for just $5, you can come pet a T-34. There you go. They've capitulated, and they actually capitulated to me which is good i assume i have the majority of the war score but we still have the italians to deal with but i'm not going to be pushing down there so much because uh enough czech blood has already been spilt the first thing is the soviets are all the allies so you get to look at fun stuff like this oh well, looks like uh won't be much of a world war going on for too long left uh just gotta wait for these guys to take out the italians and then we'll do the peace conference which i'm sure will be great considering i don't have any mods on right okay well just looking at poland i already can see what the problem was <laughs> definitely not the most beautiful thing in the world but it is a really Big blob in the middle of Europe. Uh, yes, Poland, we can have a non-aggression pact. Uh, I'm not too worried about invading you, though, considering you don't exist. So we are at peace now, and I think we were fairly compensated for our work, albeit I probably would have taken the whole of Germany, but, um... Sadly had to do with the Molotov Ribbentrop backstab, which I haven't forgotten, Mr. Stalin. We no longer have the Romanians on our side, as they have gone fascist and joined the East Asian Coast Prosperity. It all makes sense. One thing that's pretty weird about this focus tree is that you go down the path that I did with communism, you are locked to free research slots unless you do the entirety of this tree and get war college. I mean, if you go down trust in the West, you can get knowledge sharing, which will give you one, but that's locked if you do Entente of your own. And if you do what I did and create your own faction, which you would still have members in if Romania didn't go fascist and Yugoslavia actually joined at this point, you'd never be able to get the one down here. Nothing makes sense. I went ahead and deleted my faction in hopes that I can get the magical fifth research slot. That's nice, look at that. Spain looks like a cluster. Yeah, well, Soviets really did just think, screw it. I'll do it myself, really, didn't they? Actually, pretty confused what this is gonna do. I'm pretty sure it'll just give me a war goal against them like it did the Romanians, but, uh, you never know, this could suddenly get a hell of a lot worse. Of Romania, even though they are in a faction with the Japanese and the Spanish, I'm not too scared of that, and I'm going in. Speaking of Spain, uh, 
They ain't looking too fresh right now. This is so damn laggy. <laughs> well, that is the Romanian army taken care of. And whilst I don't think we'll probably end over at the peace conference because we only have some some war participation, it is nice to hold it for now. If we're lucky, we might get a collaboration government and... How are the Allies fighting the Soviets in neutral Hungary? <laughs> they just see each other driving by since they both have to be like, so they're like, hold on a second. <laughs> just drive by each other. This is cursed. This was absolutely cursed as hell. Look, look at them all fighting in my lands. Guys, uh, can, you, can you take this somewhere else? You, uh, you don't have to go home, but you, you can't stay here. And there goes Japan. And Romania. Yeah, I didn't really get anything out of that war, unsurprisingly, other than my collaboration government in Bulgaria got a couple pieces of Romania, and uh, I did steal the Balearic Islands. <laughs> Alright, well, see you later, Mr. Stalin. How exactly is this gonna end up? There you go. You're all leaving. Go home. Go home. Alright, finally, I spent all this time building up tanks, which has taken a very long time, but we are good to go, and I think it's time to take down the Soviets. Oh, right, well, sorry, Stalin. Alan, but you are a war criminal, so I'm gonna have to clear this up, shall I? There you go. <laughs> Even though they could walk through my land, they still kept a whole bunch of units over here in the Soviet petting zoo. Excuse me, fellas, but you're gonna have to leave and go home. Uh, <laughs> we got a new petting zoo. Uh, I don't think that's how you're supposed to pet them. <laughs> I want to push more into the Soviet Union, but uh, it looks like there's a bit of a coalition going on here. Uh, I'll just assume you you guys got this. I would rather not lose even more manpower to um, death. Uh, screw it. If anyone's taking Moscow, it's a Czech tank. That's right. We just Czech tank to Moscow. <laughs> That's right. The Legion's back, baby. Ain't no, no better circumstance than the Czechs rolling in the deep in the middle of Russia, eh? Oh, there we go. Uh, Soviet Union down. I didn't bother really taking anything other than Crimea just because I thought, why not? But we are done. The Czech madness has come to an end. And I gotta say, our big square nation in the middle of Europe is disgusting. <laughs> uh, especially now that Poland exists and there's West Poland and East Poland. That's uh, a bit confusing. Uh, now it's confusing as what the allies did to Russia, though. You guys definitely smoked some crack in the peace conference room, eh? Uh, but hey, I think that was a pretty fun Czech run. Uh, we didn't go too well. We didn't go too crazy, but we got done what we needed to get done. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Leave a like and subscribe button down below, and I'll catch you all on the flippity flip. -de -flip.